So as I said, we improve the uniformity of our cuttings by hydrating them. And with this picture, we can say, see the humid stored cuttings are on top and the ones without humidity are on the bottom. And everywhere we see a little circle, that's cuttings or those are cuttings that didn't root well. And that variability that we see here is going to transfer down the line to our liners, to our finished. They're going to get blown out. So this, these are the shrink and the losses that we're seeing. And we really want to reduce that as much as possible in getting a uniform crop with every single cutting as much as possible. So we talked about storage a little bit too. So what do you want to store at? Uh, we've got a variety of different species or genera that we're working with in the greenhouse right now. And they can have different sensitivities to temperature. If you think about where a plant is native to, whether that be the tropics um, or more in northern latitudes, that can really give you an indication of what you might want to store these cuttings at. For the most part, we want to avoid really cold temperatures, so things that are closer to 32 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. But things that can take some cold would be our major crops like petunia, verbena, and geraniums. A lot of perennials as well also like that really cold temperature. When we get up into the 50s or even 60, those are a lot of our chilling sensitive crops. And what I mean by chilling is that once these cuttings experience a temperature above 32 degrees, they could start senescing, getting this brown lesion or coloration in them. And that's gonna be ripe for botrytis development. So things like basil that you see here in this picture, we really wanna make sure we don't go any lower than 60 because there is gonna be some variation in your cooler. And if you don't know the ranges or cold spots in your coolers, make sure you get some data loggers or uh, thermostats in there so you know your cooler well and where to put different boxes within your cooler. How do you know which crop to store first? Uh, well, we do have some ethylene sensitive and storage sensitive crops, those being geranium. So this is one that you're gonna wanna get right away, make sure it's cool and hydrated, but stick as soon as possible. We wanna avoid any leaf yellowing or leaf, leaf abscission, because again, that's gonna allow for botrytis to come in and decimate that crop. Lantana is another one of those that can easily yellow. But then as you go down this list, you'll see things like high essential oil crops, things that we call HEOs. Uh, those ones do not like to be stored for a long period of time either, and we really need to make sure they're hydrated. So make sure you keep this list uh, accessible to your crew so they know which ones they need to stick first, especially if they're storing cuttings for any amount of time. So what happens when you don't store correctly or you haven't hydrated your cuttings correctly? Well, this is a stress. They're gonna have a stress rep response. And so this leads to potential breakdown when we get it in the greenhouse. So things like improper temperatures, if we're too low and we induce chilling injury, we can get breakdown, disease development, and um, death and loss if within our greenhouse. So any type of stress is gonna allow for disease or even physiological disorders. So abnormal growth that could reduce the aesthetic of a plant and its saleability is something we wanna avoid. Uh, if any of you have grown Ipomoea or sweet potato vine, uh, this is a crop that is really sensitive to stress. And if you have stress cuttings, say for temperature, that's really gonna allow opportunistic pathogens like uh, bacteria or even viruses come out and we're going to touch on that in a little bit more in the next slide. So we did a study with uh, Ipomoea here in West Chicago, and one of the things we were seeing is just this random breakdown of these cuttings uh, at different times of the year. And uh, through this study, we determined that, yeah, there is a internal pathogen within uh, sweet potato vine, and any stress that it comes from along with a conducive environment. We have to have three things to have the disease triangle, the pathogen, the environment, uh, and a host. So once we complete that triangle, these cuttings are susceptible to disease development and a soft rot pathogen like Pectobacterium loves that when a uh, cutting is a little bit stressed. So we wanna avoid those stressful situations as much as possible. So we avoid things like Agrobacterium and Rhodococcus uh, and viruses stressed material is going to exhibit symptoms of viruses. So keeping your plants happy and healthy is a good way to avoid disease development.